about and pay just all due respects to an amazing coach that retired oh, yes. um, May 30th on That's Saturday. Great. She, Vivian Stringer. Yes. And I want to raise her up and uh, introduce, to the, introduce her <laughs> to those who've never heard of her. Uh, but she's one of, you know, one of the people that I look up to and I appreciate all that she's done. So hear me out, Sports Shop listening audience. This woman retired from coaching following a Hall of Fame career at Cheney State, which is outside of Philly, where I grew up, mm. University of Iowa and Rector's University. She said it was the hardest decision of her life. Mm. But she's thanking God he's allowed her to do the things she loved the most. She spent 50 years in college coaching. Wow. Can you all think of anything that you've done for 30 years, 40 <laughs> years? And it involves young people. Uh, right. That's crazy. crazy decisions, hormones raging, parents who are, you know, think that their child is everything to the world. I mean, 50 years. She amassed 1,055 wins, four Final Four appearances, and 28 bursts in the tournament. She won the gold with the um, 2004 uh, Olympic team. She was assistant coach. She's been inducted in three Hall of Fames, the Women's Hall of Fame, the International Women's Sports Hall of Fame, and then the Basketball Hall of Fame. Wow. She served as a mother, a teacher, a mentor to so many women, white, brown, blue, and black folks. Um, the retirement is effective this September, and she's going to be paid a, a bonus of $872,000. Uh, but the thing that I really, really appreciate is that they decided at Rutgers, uh, because she spent uh, more than 25 years there, that they are going to name the mm. court at um, Jersey's, uh, Jersey Mike's Arena will be called C. Vivian Str uh, Stringer Court. And then they're have. going to have a formal set <laughs> ceremony this year, and I'm hopeful that I could attend. Mm -hmm. And so my connection to her, so growing up um, as a little youngster athlete, uh, my community, which is called Mount Pleasant, which is on the main line, which is basically one of the richest, wealthiest uh, communities in the nation. It's basically, you know, going back in American history when you had all these wealthy, um, uh, I'll just say the elite class, mm -hmm. as they were building and developing Philadelphia, um, you know, eventually they would move out to the su suburbs. So that's the DuPonts, you know, all these rich oh, uh, yeah. white folks. DuPont, yeah. And um, as we know in our American history, that um, uh, black people, brown and black people, served as um, janitors, housemaids, you know, nannies, all of that. Mm -hmm. And this little black community that I grew up in, um, low to middle income, uh, we served uh, our parents, our grandparents, uh, served many of these white families. And so there was a summer camp uh, for us, and they would uh, bus us out to Cheney. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, I helped. To, I, I was taught. I was given the opportunity to develop my sports skills. And, you know, as a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, that's where I first met Coach Stringer. Mm. He was the head coach at Cheney then. And as we know, it was a powerhouse program. Uh, but my relationship with her over the years uh, in touch, not in touch. And then I think it was about four years ago, I was uh, doing a lecture at Rutgers and I stopped by and had a chance to spend some time with her. Mm. And then since then, um, you know, working with her more closely with the advancement of blacks in sports, ABIS. Mm. Uh, but yes. she is just yes. a, a power. Um, John Cheney was at Cheney with her and they had a great question. friendship. And of course we know John Cheney went on to Temple to do great things. Yes. But I just wanted to lift up this woman um, in terms of the takeaways, which I would love for you all to think about takeaways when you have a great like this, uh, say it's time to, to, to sit back in their rocking chair. Uh, but the first is, I would say, longevity. How do we stay interested and competitive in the game? And whether that's broadcasting, whether it's coaching, whether it's teaching, mm. how do we stay in the game for so long? Uh, that is special. Um, she says it's her faith and her family. Mm -hmm. The second thing is she's written an amazing book, and I strongly recommend it. It's called Standing Tall. Mm. You know, there are a lot of folks, you know, folks in athletics to write books, and it's kind of like, okay, it's just a list of my accomplishments. But her book really speaks to everybody, young and old. 
um, she st- she stood tall. She's standing tall in a very very competitive game during a time period when she had to fight for everything. I mean, you can imagine what it was like for her growing up. Right. You know, there was there wasn't a place for her to play sports and compete like we have. She had to battle with Title IX uh, issues back then and today. Um, but how do we stay stand tall in the midst of all this? Um, there's just so much more about her life that I could say, you know, losing her husband unexpectedly to a heart attack. Um, there's just a lot. But I'll pause there and just, mm. um, you know, your thoughts and comments wow. about Coach Stringer and how you've been able to navigate life. Mm. What do you stand tall on? Interesting. We're talking about Dr. Deborah Strowman, what with Destro each and every Thursday. This and every Destro. A lot of questions uh, came to mind. Uh, you reminded me definitely John Cheney and uh, 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 Stringer were at uh, Cheney State, uh, HBCU, a long, long time ago. And both of them kind of prepared from there to go to do big things. Um, she she was the first coach in NC2A history to lead three different women's basketball programs to the NC2A, yeah. uh, which which is phenomenal. Um, you w- would you say that her ability to adjust and uh, to I mean, fifty years at coaching, the the type of player that you recruit is a different player your first two years than your last two years, if you will, and how I, I can imagine how she she had to adjust to the times to the new to generation X, Y, whatever they are now, and because it's a different type of uh, person to recruit. How, so I would imagine that she was flexible enough uh, to, to adjust and, and uh, uh, probably and attract those young kids to come play for her. Wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Cheney was definitely, um, you know, a diamond. Um, not much was going on at Cheney besides, you know, academics. But mm-hmm. she and John Cheney turned that, uh, university into a powerhouse. Yes, yes. Um, you know, just taking the raw talent and developing them. And then she made the decision to go out to Iowa. And at the time she um, went to Iowa, um, you know, most people don't think of Iowa as being a, a bedrock for brown and black people. I mean, let's just be honest. Oh, that's <laughs> 100% Iowa, true. <laughs> you know, uh, does have uh, small pockets of blacks. And she was able to attract not only top black talent, but also white uh, ball players. You know, I want to play under this uh, amazing coach. Mm-hmm. And she was able to put Iowa basketball, you know, on the uh, national landscape in terms of winning. Um, if I went over the names of players who chose Iowa versus going to, you know, a major city or programs that had a lot of tradition, uh, it's certainly due to a C. Vivian Stringer. Mm. And then when she went to Rutgers, uh, she got a $150,000 salary. Now, we, we definitely laugh at that today, but it was the richest contract at the time for a woman. Wow. Wow. Yeah, $150,000. Didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, okay. that's what um, what uh, a, a low assistant coach would make in, in, in women's programs today. Yeah. Uh, but she wanted to be close to home to her Pennsylvania roots. Um, she chose, you know, to be at a program. Again, that was established, no doubt. Uh, but, of course, she took it to the next level. Um, so, yes, yeah, she's been able to take talent. <clears throat> and as we know, all the great coaches will tell you, even though they won't say that their X's and O's is, or O's are some of the best, but they will always say you got to have the talent first. Yeah, yeah. And she was an amazing recruiter. Um, mm. But thank you for that question. Yes. Yeah. We did you know with Dr. Deborah Stroman, same as we do each and every Thursday. Dr. Stroman, we're talking about – the legendary coach, uh, C. Vivian Stringer, uh, who is retiring. And, you know, just listening to you talk about her accolades and just talk about, that, A, coaching for 50 years. That's yeah. just, 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 <laughs> yeah. That, that is, that is tremendous. And I think we had this conversation a couple of days ago, or maybe last week, and we, we said, you know, we're seeing people that are just built to do what they do. Mm. They couldn't, they, they just could not do anything else on this earth because that is what they were put here to do. And when you think about a 50-year career and all that she's accomplished and all the things that she has, uh, and being, like we just mentioned, the transition mm-hmm. of the sport and all the things involved with that, I think it speaks volumes that she was she was built to do what she did mm-hmm. and what yeah. she's doing. And that and yeah. it just, it's just that simple. You can't, you can't, you can try to, you know, add all the things to it, but it, that's just who she is. She, she embodies coaching as we kind of envision it today. Mm-hmm. And it, it mm-hmm. goes. It speaks volumes to that. And the uh, question I have for you, Doctor Strowman, is: 
when you think about that and you look at that, how where does that come from? How what impact mm-hmm. do you think that has on the next generation, the next coach that says, This is what I'm built to do? Mm. Wonderful, wonderful uh commentary, K Mac. You know, thinking about this that we're called in many ways, divinely called <clears throat> And some of us pay attention. Some of us fight the calling. Uh, but certainly she was called to coaching. And her ability to connect in a stern way, right? Because, you know, one of the challenges with coaching is whether or not you want to be seen as their best buddy mm-hmm. and hope that they respond to you like, I get you, you know. Or do you want to be viewed as, look, I am not your best friend. Mm-hmm. I'm here to discipline you. I'm here to give you, to pour into you things that you don't even see. But mm-hmm. you're going to find value in them five years from now, <clears throat> 20 years from now. And I think she was more of the latter. Uh, she was a very stern, disciplined co- coach, old school type. Um, you know, and having that purpose, uh, she drew people to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly she had her close circle, uh, but there was some type of um, magnetism to Coach Stringer. Uh, and everybody wanted to stand at her uh, at her footsteps, so to speak. <laughs> and when we think about this, you know, Dawn Staley had an amazing um, uh, tribute to her. Uh, Dawn Staley said that uh, Coach Stringer reminded her to what you are and what we can be as in an advocate, a voice for our game, and for every young woman who wants to participate in it in whatever form or fashion she chooses. As in Coach Stringer, to your point, did it her way. And that's motivating to young people. And I'm certainly very, very pleased to see Coach Dawn Staley use her microphone, use her platform to address these same issues around women's sports, around elevating women's basketball, not seeing us as a charity sport, but actually an investment, a a revenue Mm. of Mm -hmm. producing sport, if people would give us a chance. And so she's taken that baton from Coach Stringer and others have as well uh, to be able to speak that truth. Uh, So it is a beautiful thing what she has passed on. Uh, I'm hoping that there will be many more tributes, uh, more recognition, uh, because she is that giant in the game. And certainly being an African-American woman who did it her way uh, and leaving a legacy is, is just very, very moving. That's awesome. That's what inspires me the most, just her doing it, you know, doing it her way. I just want to leave a quick quote. Um, She was intentional about being purpose driven, but she said, you have to stay true to yourself and to do what you believe. The minute you allow disappointment or tragedy, tragedy to stop you in your tracks, you have stolen something from yourself, Mm. something more precious than you can even imagine. And that would be your dreams. Mm. And I just think that's that's, powerful. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. That goes along. A lot of people don't know what she really went through. One of her first great accomplishments was in high school when she sued the school for not allowing her to be a cheerleader because of her race. She won the case and was given a spot on the school's cheerleading squad, becoming the first black cheerleader in our town. Wow. I mean, it's just amazing. True story of tragedy Mm. and triumph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tragedy and triumph. All right, Dr. Strowman. 